Um, my name. Okay. Let me just click on this continue button here. My name is Nicole Steinbach. I worked at Microsoft for 17 years. I started as a test engineer and became a PM. And when I finished, I was eventually a program manager. If you're here right at the beginning, I was talking about how I've switched into doing more volunteer work. And in this fall, I'll be revisiting um, what I'm doing and see what I want to do with the rest of my life. But this next hour, I'm very excited about sharing tips that I have for working in tech. So the first stage of working in tech is before you even apply for a job. My biggest tip, which you are already doing, is to do in internships or side projects. These are so valuable for you to learn what it's like to work in tech, but it's also valuable um, to help you get a beefed up resume. So for example, after I grad or after I had one term of university, this is what my resume looked like. I had a few grades, I did not do well in English lit, and I had some work experience, the fancy of which was uh, Wendy's cashier. But after I graduated, because I did an internship co-op program, I had a lot of different experiences. So with startups, with government work, with Microsoft. So getting that um, first job after I graduated was easier than if it was only um, my cashier experience. If you aren't able to get uh, internships, uh, another option is doing your own side project. So making a website or an app that you can showcase. That's a great example as well. Next is having mentors. So having people you can ask for support and help. Um, these are great people that will give you uh, honest advice throughout your career. Now, before you have a job, you typically have an interview. The best way to prepare for an interview is to prepare questions and answers. And you might be thinking, I'm the one being interviewed. Why do I have to prepare questions? It's really important for you to um, know what the job you are getting is going to be like. So you wanna know about culture questions, company questions. Often when I was interviewing people, I was almost more interested in the questions they were asking and they were curious about than some of the answers that they were, that they were giving. Now, if you are having a tech interview, there are some answers you should prepare before you go there. One question that you'll always get is why do you wanna either work at the company or work at that specific team? You should have a great answer for that. You should also be able to talk about your projects. So this is the architecture of them, the tech, what it's like working with others. A side tip here, if you ever have a choice to do an elective in school, um, I would always focus on something that has group projects because learning how to work with people is potentially even more important than um, learning about the technology of the class you're taking. And from a tech perspective, if you're especially if you're going into a programming or development um, job, you should be able to answer questions about all types of data structures. So you guys know all the data structures. Um, if you don't, there's a list of them. And there's a great website here where you can go and it gives you an overview of them. And when you are get, get asked one of these tech questions, make sure you can say what data structure you're going to use and the pros and cons of each. Um, my husband, who's a developer uh, manager, mentioned that you shouldn't overuse hash tables. I'm not sure why that is, but that's one of his pet peeves when he's doing technical interviews. And of course, practice. So if you have a mentor in tech or even with a friend, um, you can interview each other. You can find tons of interview questions, of course, on the internet. And so practicing before you go into the interview is a great idea. Now, let's say you are choosing a job. How are you going to pick which job you want? So there's this concept called the four Ps of a job. And it's like this little triangle thing. Um, you can choose the product, the position, and the people. For me personally, um, people is at the top because it's the most important. Um, when I'm working on a team, it's who it's with. However, when I first started in my career product, I always wanted to work on like the, the shiny thing, the most exciting thing. 
And the other P is perks. And so perks could be flexibility of the job, being able to bring a dog into the office, um, that, that type of thing. So whatever perks means to you. Next, when you get an offer, make sure you ask for what you want. So it's totally cool when you get an offer to negotiate a little bit. Um, sometimes when you ask for what you want, you get it. And so the example here, when I first started at Microsoft, I was a tester and I saw all these program managers would be bringing laptops into meetings. And I'm like, man, it would be helpful if I had a laptop. So I asked for one and I got one. And people were very surprised that I had a laptop because at that point in time, um, testers were not assigned them, but just asking um, for it is, is how I ended up with it. Sometimes when you ask for things, you don't get them, but sometimes you still get some sort of benefit. So when I was working at Microsoft, I asked uh, Bill Gates to donate some of his time for a, a giving campaign auction. He said no, but just getting an email from Bill Gates was uh, very exciting. And other people I did ask said yes. So when you start a job, what is the first thing you should do? And so especially the mom and me wants to tell you to maximize your benefits. So when you get into tech, you might have options for 401k or different financial vehicles. Make sure you understand what all of those are and maximize your investments you can get into them. A lot of companies will match what you put into a 401k and you wanna make sure you are definitely maximizing that. Um, from a financial perspective, I always recommend if you want a financial advisor, which I would recommend, is having a fee-only financial advisor. A lot of financial advisors, their incentive programs are to sell you specific things, so they work on commission. So it's really important you understand how they are incented to help you. And from an investment perspective, my personal preference is always low price index funds. So that track the market as opposed to investing in individual companies. If you want to invest in individual companies, it's important that you do all that research and understand the financials. And just for me personally, that's not interesting. So um, that's why I go with the index fund. Uh, it's really important to start investing as soon as you possibly can, and that's because of the magic of compound interest. So in this example, um, Emily starts investing 10 years before Dave, and at 65, she has about double what Dave has. So start as soon as you can. When you first start your job, it's the perfect time to do that automatic investing. Um, because you've never got that big tech paycheck before, putting a big chunk in, away right at the beginning, um, you won't even, you, it won't be impactful for you. Okay, so now you have the job. What are some productivity tips? Um, I am a huge fan of lists. So I would recommend when you get up, you, you make a list and then you get epic shit done and you just keep repeating. I find lists a very um, comforting way to get a whole pile of thoughts in my head. Sometimes I do it digitally. This is an example of me and my kids um, when school first closed down uh, last year. And so just getting things down and then working through them gives you also gives you a sense of accomplishment and it can help you prioritize what you work on. Focus on the essential. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming at you when you're at work. I read this great book called Essentialism and it had this concept of you have these choices. So the circle on the left you're giving out energy in like 50 different directions and you aren't making much progress. But if you look at those and you evaluate it and you're like, what's the one thing that I really care about? And you put all your energy in there, you can make a significant amount of progress. Ah, this is a talk, uh, 22 minute meetings that I gave and it's really about having efficient meetings. And so when you get into the work environment, uh, meetings can be exciting and fun and productive, or they can be the most boring, useless things you've ever been in. And so if you own a meeting, uh, make sure you have an agenda, you send reading beforehand, you start on time. I, I like this idea of getting people to, to stand up. If you do scrum, you have a daily stand up. And when people are standing, they tend to be more efficient with their time. 
time because they want to go back and sit down. Uh, making sure people aren't distracted during meetings. So that might mean not being on laptops, although that's a bit different when you are online or no phones um, and making sure you focus and sending notes and action items afterwards. There's, it's interesting because running a good meeting can be a huge impactful thing for your team, but it's not something we necessarily learn about in school. We just either uh, learn by example or don't. So, so there you go, have, have great meetings. Um, for all communication, my one piece of advice is make it all shorter. So there's this great quote um, that he would have written a shorter letter but didn't have the time. When you are communicating with people, people are getting so much information. So taking that extra time to keep it short and sweet is super, super helpful. And you'll likely uh, get a better response. Another thing that can sometimes happen in tech is you take on way too many projects. So I've had experiences where I've taken on five different projects and was scrambling and didn't do really well on any of them. And that negatively impacted me versus when I just focused on one big project and did a better job. So really think about that quality over quantity. Um, at least from my experience, I've never gotten feedback that said, oh, Nicole, you didn't do enough. It was always about the quality of the things that I did. Uh, I belong to a cult. It's called the Cult of Done. And I find it very inspiring. So this is basically the whole idea of the cult is to inspire you not to procrastinate. And that was a big problem I had in college. Um, so the few things that I really like about it is this one, which is pretending you know what you're doing is almost the same as knowing what you're doing. Um, so just accept that you know what you're doing, even if you don't, and just do it. I find that that inspiring because everyone does something for the first time. And so having uh, that confidence in yourself can be really helpful. I also love laughing at perfection. Um, it is, it's boring and it does keep you from being done. And I think that's a lot of reasons why people procrastinate is because they have this fear and they're not going to do a good enough job. Um, but just doing the job is, is the thing. So, so getting it started and you'll, you'll surprise yourself. Um, so on the job people tips, I sort of mentioned this at the beginning that a lot of times working in tech, it's, it's not about the tech, it's about working with the people. And so um, one way to get others to like you is to uh, like them first. And the best way to be interesting to someone is to be interested in them. So instead of constantly talking like about yourself, which I feel like I sort of am right now, um, listen to other people and ask them questions about um, themselves. Uh, this next one, MRI, and this is not the, the medical scanning thing. It stands for most reasonable intentions. So sometimes at work, I would be working with someone and they would be doing something crazy and I would just think they are a crazy person. 99% um, of the time, that is not true and they just have different priorities or things that they're focused on. So this concept is to assume um, that everyone has most reasonable intentions. And when there's a conflict, address that and work through that with the other person, as opposed to assuming they're off doing something, you know, evil or negative. Uh, the one story I have here as I was working with a design research person and her and I were just like constantly butting heads because I wanted her to do this thing and she was always doing that thing. And we got together once and we wrote our priorities on the whiteboard and her priorities were exactly the opposite of my priorities. And that didn't solve our problem, but it gave us um, the understanding of where that conflict was so we could better understand each other. Okay, I'm seeing, I don't know if a question came in here. Ah, yes, theater. We'll get to theater too, thanks Mike. Um, next up. Uh, feedback is a gift, so embrace it. So some, sometimes you get feedback and it, it doesn't feel good if it's ways that you can prove or something that you shouldn't be doing, but it's really important to pause and consider what that feedback is. So the worst way I ever got feedback, I worked on uh, MSN Messenger when that was a thing back in the day. And this one 
developer engineer, instead of coming to talk to me, he updated his status message to, to say how awful a feature I was um, working on and had designed was. And it was like the most Seattle passive aggressive way that you could give feedback. And because it was done in such a bad way, I just was mad at him instead of actually thinking about his feedback. Now that's been a long time. He was actually right. He had really good feedback, but because I was so like annoyed at the way he was delivering it, I didn't consider it myself. So even if something is um, really annoying you the way that you get that feedback, do take that time to pause and consider it because even though someone might not be delivering it very nicely, it might actually um, have value. The other thing to think about is the flip side is when you wanna give feedback, make sure you give it in a way where someone isn't going to outright um, dismiss it if it's that sort of antagonistic um, approach. So give it in a the nicest approach you can, but be honest. So now, now you've been working and it's been a year, what do you do? Um, the first thing I, one thing to consider is to give back. So if you are lucky enough to work in tech, you're lucky enough. Uh, we have, tech has a lot of great paying jobs and a lot of flexibility. And so you'll be in a, a position of, of privilege and able to, to give. There's different ways to give. You can uh, give money. You can give your time by volunteering or being even, as we talked about, being a mentor or having a mentor. Being a mentor is also a very helpful thing for others, but it's also helpful for yourself um, because it gives you time to reflect and help other people and give them advice, which sometimes can be used on you too. I find that happens with me. So for, for giving back, you can give to charities, but I'd also... Um, have you considered giving to family and friends who maybe not be in the same financial position as you? I read this uh, great book this year called Happy Money, and it talks about um, how to spend your, your money to be happier. And it's the standard things, which are sort of cliche, but I still think are still really important to think about, which is like experiences and spending your, your money and time on other folks. Um, so there's this little analogy that I thought about when I was reading that book where you could buy like a super fancy car or you could buy a still fancy car, but less fancy. And you could take your family and friends on three amazing vacations. And so thinking about that for yourself and reflecting on what would make you happier. Now, to me, it's always going to be about the experience, but maybe there's some people who just really want the fancy car and that's okay too. But knowing um, about yourself is really important. Okay, do not lose vacation days. So at Microsoft, when you first start, you get three weeks of vacation and you progressively get more as your, as your, um, seniority at the company increases. Do not lose these. So you can, at Microsoft, you can roll over your vacation days for a year. And so you can get up about up to two years of vacations at one time. But there's some people who would just lose them. And that would drive me crazy because when you are losing vacation days for a corporation, that means you're basically working for free. Um, so do not work for free. It's also working it takes a lot out of you and it's really important to have time off. Um, and, and it doesn't just help, you know, your life. It also helps uh, your work and your creativity at work. Everyone needs a reset. I want to talk about unlimited vacation days. So did not have this at Microsoft, but unlimited vacation days are a lie. You're not going to ever be able to start at a company and just be like, see ya, I'm never coming to work. I'm going to be utilizing my unlimited vacation days. And so um, if, you, if you get unlimited vacation days, I would encourage you to define an amount when you start that you think would be appropriate for, for a person. Um, if you just started at Microsoft, that would be 15 days or three weeks uh, in a year. So after you define that amount, I would communicate that with your manager, like, hey, I know we have unlimited vacation days, but I'm gonna be taking 15 days of vacation this year. And then make sure you take it throughout that year. Um, because otherwise you end up working for free for, for your company. 
And there's a great book that just came out called Time Off. Again, it talks about some of those things I was mentioning, that time off is important for you as a person, but it also um, help your career and give you time to reset and just to explore other things as well. Okay, some forever tips. Um, here's a whole pile of great books. The two books that I mentioned are also in this list. So if you go to this URL, you'll be able to go to my Amazon list of the books that I've uh, loved over the years. I could talk about each of these books for a long time, but I'm not going to because you guys don't want to be here all morning or afternoon, depending where you are. Uh, next, considering um, valuing your time over money. And so when you get into a position to be able to, to trade these off, um, some things that I did over the years is I worked part-time. So instead of working 100% time at Microsoft, I worked 80%. So I'd have Fridays off to do kids stuff or personal stuff or whatever I wanted to do. Um, hiring cleaners is also important. This happened for us when my mother-in-law was visiting and it had been a couple of years since we started working and we had two kids and she's like, mm, have you considered hiring cleaners? And that was after I think she used one of our bathrooms. And so we did that and that was something um, that uh, really was something that that helped us out. And then of course, use grocery delivery services and all, all the things to help with your efficiency. Uh, Going back to theater, take an improv class. So this is me in leading some dance off at an improv competition thing, and it's so fun. So improv can help you with public speaking and confidence and justification and being fabulous in meetings. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So I always encourage people to, to try that out. It's also a great way to meet people who are not at work. It was exciting to me to start having friends that didn't work at Microsoft. And then the big one, um, find your reason for being. So this is a Japanese concept and I, I'm always up for a good Venn diagram. And I think this one is just so fabulous for people to think about what that um, passion and what they love and what you can be paid for and what you're good at and sort of finding that, that sweet spot for you. And, and this is something that I'm continually working on. So um, yeah, okay. That is all the tips that I had, and I would be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have. Um, at Nicole Steinbach is me on Twitter, but you can also find me on LinkedIn, and I think that was in my bio. I'm not seeing any questions in the Q&A. Um, column. So I don't know if I just wowed you so much that I, you have no questions left. Um, but uh, maybe a question that I can ask is, is there a tip that was surprising for you or that stood out to you in the talk? And you guys can just type this in as a question in the Q and A. Oh, we have a couple. Okay, um, we, great. we have one question and then one answer to your question. Awesome. So Luke says, focus one on one project instead of multiple. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Um, Another way that I sometimes talk about that is being a unitasker instead of a multitasker. Because when you're context switching, um, you know, our brains aren't computers, that takes, that takes time and distracts us versus just focusing on one task at a time can um, improve your quality and your uh, efficiency. So what advice would you give to an 18 year old going for computer science and wanting to be in the tech industry? Well, I feel like if, I'm not sure if you were here at um, the beginning, but the the main thing that I had at the start was making sure that you're doing internships and side projects and actually uh, doing the computer science-y thing to, to build up your uh, resume and also find people that can be mentors to you so that you can talk through um, the journey that you have. The other advice I would say is yes, go into computer science. I 
that's one of the, the things that I, I love telling young people because it's just such a great industry with flexibility and financial rewards and it can be fun. Um, so, so yes, do it. You're on the right path. Any other questions? Well, if you have questions that you wanna ask me afterwards as well, there is my LinkedIn in the description and I'm happy to chat after um, this too. We have another one. Oh, okay. Um, you said you decided to work part-time. At what point in your career did you feel capable of doing that? Well, it when I decided to work part-time, it wasn't because I was I felt capable of doing it. I felt I was going to um, not be in a very good place if I didn't change something. So I switched to part-time when I had two young kids. Um, and so for me at that point in time, I felt like I was just failing all over the place. I was failing at work and failing at being a mom and a wife and a friend and being, um, just a healthy individual. And so for me, it was more about, I need to change something here because things aren't going well. Um, I, I was, even though I say, I felt like I was failing at work, I was doing a good job at work. Um, and so the team that I was on, I'd been there for a couple of years, so they felt comfortable with me moving to part time. One thing that was a bit interesting about that, this was quite a while ago, um, where the HR team was actually more nervous about me going part time than my manager was. And it wasn't because I they were nervous about me in particularly. They were nervous about other people wanting to go part time. But when you go part time, you also give up aspects, you give up a portion of your salary. And so no, no other people on that team ended up making that switch. So it was really beneficial to me and my family. Okay. I don't see any more questions. Oh, um, are tech companies willing to offer part-time jobs for student on campus? Um, I don't know personally, but I would ask them. I would ask for exactly what you want. I mentioned that um, at the beginning of the talk. I think it would be a fantastic idea if they did. I know a lot of tech companies, especially the big ones, do internships where you work for the company like 100% of the time where you're not going to school and then you go back and then you work at school. So I would totally encourage that. Um, the internships that I did extended my degree by a year. So instead of graduating in four years, I graduated in five years. Um, but that year was so valuable from my work experience perspective and, and having a resume where I could actually get a tech job that I'd highly recommend doing that. Again, going back to like the focusing on one thing at a time, focusing on school and a part-time job and you know whatever else you have going on um, could be challenging but you might also be that type of person where you would thrive in that environment i actually did work part-time at microsoft while i was going to school but that was a different thing so there was this thing called being a student consultant and i basically gave away a whole pile of microsoft software so i think it was like visual studio and some the latest version of windows and i organized some tech talks so it's weird because you asked me that question and I didn't even realize that I actually did that when I was going to school. So finding those opportunities um, that are out there is a, is a great thing to do. When I was in school, I also worked in the um, computer help desk. So it wasn't for a tech company, but it was um, better paying than working at like my Wendy's job. And I was, and it was related to computers and working with people. So that was a great experience, even though it wasn't like a, a programming type job, it was still slightly in the tech industry. So that could be another option for you um, if you're on campus. Okay. 
So I personally had a question that people might ask. Um, how would you deal with the stress of being in the high stakes, like high pace environment of a big tech company? Yeah, that that's a great question. I think making sure you build in stress relievers. Um, one of the things I would recommend to everyone is figuring out what their exercise routine is. Um, and making sure you do something that's not just sitting down and on a computer every day. And the most important thing about whatever exercise you do is that you like it. Um, so you keep doing it. So it could be a walk or a bar class or a sports team or running on a treadmill, um, whatever that thing that you will keep doing repeatedly, um, building that into your life and also making sure you have time for um, fun social connections the other thing that's really interesting right now, when, when actually when I first started, I didn't have a cell phone for like a whole two months. Um, but now everyone's always connected and your like phone is beep or your watch is beeping notifications and your phone is. So really having some time where you just either turn your phone off or you put your phone away and you, you take actual time away from work, not just away from the desk you're sitting at, but that mental time away from work is really important. Thank you for that answer. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, feel free to ask now. It can be about Nicole's career or anything talked about in this workshop. Just feel free to ask. Is anyone curious about this rubber chicken on my desk? So. Um, this was a picture I took at my last day at Microsoft, and this rubber chicken is a thing that I used in meetings. Um, a lot of times in meetings, people give like status updates or there's a whole pile of people presenting. And what happens is everyone gets 10 minutes and the first person takes 15 minutes and the second person takes 17 minutes. And, you know, the, the poor last person is ending up with two minutes when they should have had 10. And so I use this rubber chicken technique, which is like, if you go over time, I'm going to squeeze this. And the good news is when people have a visual, especially if it's funny and light, um, it helps people keep on time. And I don't think I ever actually had to squeeze the rubber chicken. It was just the threat of um, squeezing this uh, ridiculous thing in a meeting that, that helped people stick to a time schedule. Um, I have another question maybe sure. more people interested in going into the tech environment might ask. Um, do you have any tips for collaboration in these tech companies for um, managing people, stuff like that, that sort of social interaction since you've had these roles at Microsoft? Yeah, so um, I loved managing people and I think it's the best way to get into that is before being a manager is being a mentor to someone. So if you've been working at a company for a couple of years, volunteering to mentor someone who's brand new, because you get to do all the best parts of being a manager, which is helping someone grow, giving them ideas and feedback, but you don't have to do all the stuff like writing reviews and, and um, giving them potentially hard messages. So it's a great way to start. And it's, it's helping someone else to see if that's a type of role that you would like, because not everyone in tech wants to be a manager or needs to be a manager. There's lots of um, high level, like tech focused and engineering roles that you can have. Um, but the best and the best way to like just learning how to work with people is to work with people. So, I mean, you can read as many books and advice that you want, but you need to have that practical experience. Um, when I was at Microsoft early on in my career, I did an MBA and part of this MBA program, they assigned us into these study groups where we had to do projects. And the project team that I got on was probably the most dysfunctional project team of like everyone else. Um, but in retrospect, it was very frustrating at the time, but in retrospect, that was a great experience um, because I got to learn how to work with different personalities and overcome those differences. 
So again, if you are thinking about taking an elective at school, I, and it's not like core to your degree, I would highly recommend taking things um, with group projects, even if it's not in tech um, and learning, because learning how to work with others who um, you don't necessarily choose, and that happens at work as well, um, is just a great skill to have. And working with other people, I think is so key to success in any industry. And again, it's just about practicing and actually doing it and trying things and failing and trying something else. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Um, as I mentioned before, you're always welcome to follow up with me uh, on LinkedIn and I can answer questions there as well. Yeah, I think that's all the questions we have. Let me... Okay. Video. Thank you so much, Nicole, for spending all this time with us today. And telling us all the tips you have for working in tech. We really appreciate it on behalf of everyone at Labs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I enjoyed sharing some things that I know. I Thank hope you. it was helpful. It was very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone has a great day and thank you again for being here with us. Okay. Bye everyone.